first off, we have to put water into the test chamber thingy. And then we mix some Epsom salts. This is just some of this stuff. Magnesium sulfate. Start it around. Get that all dissolved. And finally, what we need is a copper electrode and anode. I have these two separated by a piece of foam core board and zip tied together, so they're really close together. And I have a 16 volt, 3 amp laptop power supply from the IBM ThinkPad. You can see it's bubbling there. So we'll let that sit, and it uh, should make the chemical all bluey. So now it is finished, and as you can kind of see, there's a little pile of the copper uh, hydroxide building up inside of there. Now let's take a look at the electrode and anode, or cathode and anode. So here we have the cathode and anode, and as you can see, they're quite changed by the reaction. Now these two sides were facing each other, so that meant that that was where the least resistance was, and so that's where most of the reaction happened. You see a shiny copper underneath it. Underneath that sludge. Now let's deal with this stuff. Now we take the solution, pour it into another container. Oh, hey, look at that. Lots of stuff stuck to the bottom. Hmm. Then we take this over and put it onto the oven. Now that it has dried, the copper hydroxide has solidified at the bottom of the of the uh, pot, and so now we just chip it off. That's weird. There's a darker gray material at the bottom. I I believe that is the copper oxide because whenever whenever copper hydroxide reaches 180 degrees Celsius, or no, 80, 80 degrees Celsius, about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. It loses the hydrogen atoms, I think, and it degrades down into copper oxide. So that's kind of interesting. I crushed the copper hydroxide. Actually, first I scraped it off, trying not to get much of the copper oxide off the dark green stuff. And then I mashed it up against the side of it with the blunt side. And that broke up a lot of the chunks and made it to a... Nice, I reduced it to a nice little powder. I guess this light's a little bit excessive. There.
there we have copper hydroxide powder. Quite a nice amount of it too. I really like the color. It looks like the sand from a far off planet. You know how like Mars is red because of all the iron? Well, I wonder what a planet would look like if it had an overabundance of copper. Possibly something like that. That would be so awesome. But there you go. I don't know of any uses for copper hydroxide. I was originally aiming to make copper sulfate so I could ele uh, electroplate things with copper, but I, w I wound up with that anyways. Yeah, I might have found a use for it. Well, not a really use, but a way to play with it. Turn it upside down and pat it down to make sure it's all kind of stuck together. And that's kind of cool. And then you flip it over. And there you go. It's kind of fun. Not counting, it's fun to just spin it like that. It also, by spinning it like that, you also uh, refine it even more. Not really refine it, but you turn it into smaller and smaller pebbles or fractures of copper hydroxide. Well, there you go.